What's going on everybody, it's Delmar and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm really excited to dive into the Interaction SDK. Specifically, we're going to be looking at how the hand pose detection works. I'm going to show you some of the components that are available out of the box. I'm also going to walk you through how to add all the components that you need to do hand detection, specifically with prefabs that already exist, such as doing a thumbs up and thumbs down. If you want to do perhaps a stop sign, you can do that. And I'm also gonna show you how to create your own custom hand poses, which is gonna be really helpful. So let's jump into my computer and I start working on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how we can set this up. So the only thing that I have right now is a room environment, which is part of the Oculus integration. So what you can do here is I'm gonna be searching for Oculus interaction. And there's gonna be a couple of different components in here. Let's make this a little bigger. And actually, let me make it smaller so you guys can see what they are. So this one is gonna be a sample for the poke button. The one that I need is a sample rig, and this is gonna be the most basic basic uh, rig for the interaction SDK. And it's going to contain the hands, the controllers, and also the rig itself. So the other thing that I also wanna show you, this is the OVR camera rig, right? And this is something that we have been using for quite a while. And if you wanna support hand tracking, which is what we're gonna be doing today, just make sure you go into Oculus, go into the Oculus Project Config, and you have to have controllers in hands. I had a couple of you ask me why it wasn't working, and that was the reason why that part wasn't working. And then if you look at the input OVR, this is gonna be the core of the interaction SDK. So any kind of providers or data transformation that happened between the skeleton of the hand to the new interaction SDK is all basically getting taken care of by some other components in here. I'm not gonna go through some of these components just so you know that this is basically the core part of what we're going to be doing for this video and future videos. The part that you need to understand is that the left hand and the right hand are going to be inside of the hands game object, which is basically a child of the input of VR. We're gonna be using these ones quite a bit, so just know that that's going to be part of that. So once you have that, the next thing that I will look at is to say that you want to capture a new pose, so we can just create a new poses game object, just set it as 000. And then this is basically just going to give us the data whether something is being detected or not. I'm also going to be bringing in a, a new component which I have under prefabs debug area. And we can just put this one right here. And this one I use quite a bit for detecting basically anything that I wanna write to a log. It's going to be displayed in this log in here. So I use this quite a bit. So if you wanna use it, you can use it and also make sure that you enable debugging here. This repo is going to be in GitHub, so you'll be able to use it. So, so let's say that we wanted to capture a pose and, and basically we didn't want to create one from scratch because there are a couple that are available. So what you can do is you can go into the Oculus and then interaction. There's also a couple of them in here that you can use. Let's say that we wanted to detect the thumbs up, so you can just drag and drop that one. And we may want to also do, in, let's say we wanna do thumbs down as well. Perhaps I wanna use the left hand for this one, so we can just do underscore there for left, and then maybe this one, we can just do left hand for that one as well. And then the hand rep is gonna be one of the core components that are needed, so for basically for the hand pose to get detected, so you can just drag and drop the left hand there, and then we can do the same thing with the other game object. So basically that's gonna give us everything that you need in order for you to capture. The next thing, let's say that we wanted to print this to the Bulgaria, we can just add these two different callbacks. We can just basically associate that with our debug area, which is gonna print the, the, a message that says, yeah, I did detect the thumbs up, or I did detect the, the, the thumbs down. So what we can do here is I can just drag and drop the debug area. I'll just drag and drop, drop it in here. And I can also do that on this one. We can do that on this one. And then I have a function in here, which is under the logger that it can say detected. So we can just copy this and I can say that this is selected and I can do the same thing on this one. We can just do and copy basically the text that I have in there. So these callbacks are gonna be only detected when, when that hand pose is detected. So you have the when selected or when unselected. So these are gonna be critical that you remember because we're gonna be using those quite a bit. So let me just copy this and then we'll do this. We'll do the same thing in this one. We can just do logger and then in this case it's gonna be down. So just rename this one to down pose left selected and we can do the same thing in here and make sure that this one is set to unselected why don't we just try this and see if this is going to be printing into the lock i'm going to go ahead and hit play so as soon as you do that you're going to see you know i did that on the left hand so we're going to do thumbs up and that works thumbs down thumbs up thumbs down if i do it with the right hand it's not going to do anything because we don't have anything currently associated with the right hand so 
So we know that these poses work and that's cool, but what if we wanted to debug them, right? So that's gonna be the next part. We're gonna be creating a brand new pose from scratch, but I'm gonna be leaving that to for the end. So for now, let's go ahead and create a new debug. I'm just gonna call this one debug poses. And this one is gonna have a few components. Let me make sure that I set it to zero, zero, zero. And this is gonna have components that are gonna allow us to troubleshoot. And the first one that I'm gonna be adding in here is going to be the hand shape and a skeletal debug visual. So just know that this is gonna be one. I'll, we'll come back to it and then add the other components that we need to associate. This one is gonna be transform. Let me make sure that I do that again. Transform, transform, and then feature, vector, and the one that we're gonna need is the parent visual. So, so once you have those, we're also going to basically tell the system, okay, which, which actual skeletal or which actual poses do we wanna associate these debug visuals with. And then the ones that I'm gonna do is, let's go ahead and do it on the thumbs up. So say that we wanted to debug the thumbs up just to make sure that it's working. So this is gonna have a reference to the shape recognizer, which I'm gonna explain in just a minute. And also the transform recognizer. So shape recognizer is gonna be basically how we have or basically our fingers. So if we have our fingers all the way open, that's going to be the shape that gets recognized. And I'll walk you through some of those. But let's say that we wanted to, you know, curl the fingers, you can also, that's gonna be a different shape that gets recognized. So some of those thresholds in, in different states, we're gonna be setting up when we set up a, a new shape recognizer and also the actual configuration for it. Just trust me right now that this is gonna work, but I'll show you how that works. And then the finger feature, the bug visual, this is gonna be another component that we're gonna need. This one, we're just gonna do finger feature skeletal, and it's gonna be this. And if I go into it, you're gonna see that this is gonna have a line render, right? And the idea on the shape recognizer is that it's going to have a line render. So let's say that we wanna move the fingers just a little bit down or perhaps do a curl. What is gonna happen is we are detecting a curl, it's going to have the actual line render, it's gonna change to green. If it's not detecting the curl and that's what we wanna detect, basically it's gonna change it to red. So on the transform feature, the bug per and visual, you're gonna have to look for something similar. In this case, it's gonna be the transform feature and it's gonna be this one right here. And I know that because I've been playing around with this, but this is basically gonna have a line render that is gonna tell us the orientation of our hand and also the transform feature. So transform feature could be something like the palm is facing my face or the palm is not facing my face. So that could be one of the ones that we could look for. And then the other one that we're also gonna need is going to be the actual transform recognizer debug visual, which is gonna be a little different to the ones that we did before. But in this one, you see that this just requires two different options. If you look at this one, this is actually going to be a little bit different because it's gonna create a box. So again, on this one, I did a left hand. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag and drop that. And then on the transform, Form recognizer active state. I'm just gonna go ahead and add a new one, and then we're gonna drag and drop this. It's gonna make more sense as soon as I get things working here and then set up. And then I'm gonna make this maybe like point, we can do point three, point three, or point three, otherwise it's gonna be gigantic. But at the end of the day, most of these things that I'm doing right now, let's do point two, point two, point two, are gonna be for debugging, right? We wanna debug hand poses, we wanna make sure that we have the right numbers because I don't know that we're that good with, you know, imagining what the numbers should be. So we just use this type of different, you know, visuals to be able to troubleshoot some of the hand poses. Okay, so let's see if this works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and hit play and you can kind of see now I have a line render. If I have my hands all the way, remember this is gonna be a thumbs up, everything is green. So the two boxes are green because this is only detecting the transform recognizer. It's only looking for the raise up. And if I do this, this is this is true, right? This is a logical operation. It's saying the wrist is currently, you know, going upwards. And then if I bring my fingers in closer, you're gonna see that everything, you know, everything is currently it's actually detecting the the actual uh, hand pose. So so this is good, right? We we can detect so everything is green. We want everything to be green if we're going to be creating a hand pose. So that's really helpful. So if you wanted to do another one, you can do the same thing here. I can just go ahead and clone this one. If I wanted to do the, the thumbs down, so I can just basically come in here and just associate it. And we can see that we should now have multiple boxes. So the one on the top is, is green, but the one on the bottom doesn't get green until, you know, until I actually do thumbs down. So that's great and all. And now you might say, well, Dilmer, what if I wanted to do a different kind of recognition? If you need to start diving into, you know, detecting shapes and, and recognizing 
using a, a hand gesture. In my case, I want to do the shaka sign. So if I do shaka sign, then I, yeah, I was I was looking for the meaning. Basically, if we go into images, you're gonna see that this is gonna be the pose that we're looking for. So I want to be able to basically on these three fingers, I want to basically curl them all the way. I want to have the pinky finger, you know, pointing basically upwards. Also, all my fingers, I want to have them point upwards, and also the thumb, I want it to be that way. So that's why you need to start thinking about okay, how is it that I'm going to be developed this? So you need to dive into shape recognizer. So there's gonna be different states. So if you have your hands open, neutral and closed. So it's gonna be kind of like most of the states on, on all these shapes that we're going to be detecting. So if my hand is, is up like this, this is gonna be the shape that it gets recognized. If I do neutral, if I close it all the way, if I do a curl, the states are gonna be similar and you can see the states right here. If I have a curl like this, this means that they're currently the curl is currently open. If I have an angle a little bit, which is basically gonna match this, that means that the curl is currently neutral. And if I have it all the way down, which means that the tip of each of my, of my fingers are basically touching my palm, that means that it's currently closed. So there's also flexion, similar idea, you open, neutral, and then close. Also, if you do what they call adduction, that's gonna be the separation between the angle between each one of the fingers, except the pinky. For some reason, the pinky is not supported, so just know that that is a limitation. And then a position is going to be anything that we can detect that is touching. So if we have the index finger touching my, my thumb finger, that means that opposition is going to be, you know, it's going to be touching. This is within 1.5 centimeters apart. This is gonna be near. So basically, if we are like this, it's gonna be near. If we're touching, it's gonna be, you know, touching. If we're like all the way like this, that means that the opposition is currently set to none. And then the transform recognition, this is gonna be basically the orientation. So if my wrist is, is basically pointing up, and let's say that I wanted to look for a thumbs up, that means that my wrist direction is to be upward. So if I wanted to do down, you can do that. If I wanted to face my palm against my face, that's when those transforms are going to return true or false. So what I'm gonna do here is I already have a pose and shape. So let's say that we need to create a new a new pose, right? So in our case, we're gonna be creating a, a shaka. We can say shaka sign. And this is gonna be, in this case, why don't we do the right hand so that we can have, you know, something different and make sure everything is set to zero. And this is not gonna give us anything just yet because we also need to create something else. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into a folder. In my case, I put it under poses and then shapes, and then we're gonna be creating a brand new shape. And if you go under Oculus, interaction, SDK, there's pose detection, and we're gonna be creating a brand new shape. And this one, I'm just gonna call it Shaka Sign. And you can see here, this doesn't designate whether this is for the left hand or for the right hand. This is basically for your fingers, regardless of which hand this is gonna go under. And then what I'll do here, I'll just say Shaka Sign and then hit enter. And then some of the settings in here are going to are, are going to be based on the diagrams that I was showing, the images that I was showing you. So on the thumb, I'm gonna be doing curl. So I want the curl to be open. So it's gonna select curl open. And I'm also going to be doing abduction. So the reason why I'm doing abduction is because this finger is going to be separated from my index. So I want that to kind of like have an angle. So I'll do is open on the curl, I'll do abduction, I'll set it also to open, I think that's what I did. And then the three fingers, remember these three, we're gonna have to have them close. So what I ended up doing there is a deflection and also curl. So we can just come in here, flexion, and then also do curl, and then I'll do flexion and also curl, also flexion and do it again, curl. And then we wanna make sure that everything in here is closed, right? So I'm just gonna do close, close, close. And I didn't learn this magically. I did a lot of debugging with the, you know, the, with the visuals that I just showed you a few minutes ago. So just make sure that you play around with that and then you're gonna be able to figure it out how this works. And then on the pinky, I ended up doing flexion and also curl. And I ended up doing that as open. This might not be 100% accurate, but it actually gave me good results. So you can, you know, you can definitely just play with that. So this is gonna basically detect, you know, that I'm doing this regardless of which orientation I am I am doing. And then the next thing that you need to do is, well, we have the shapes, we also, but we need to add all the different components that are, that are listed in here. So I'm gonna add one by one and we're gonna be looking at all of them. So the first one is gonna be the hand rep. This is gonna tell us, okay, which hand we're gonna be tracking this on. So why don't we do it on the right hand since it's gonna be a little bit different this time. So the next component that we're gonna need is going to be the selector unit event. So this is gonna tell us whether the hand pose is getting detected or not. And then we're also going to need an active state. So I'll just do active state selector. 
I'm also going to need an active state group. And I'll, I'll explain to you how those works. And then lastly, we're gonna need two more, which is gonna be the shape recognizer state. And also the last one is gonna be the transform recognizer active state. So we're gonna start from the very bottom and then I'll explain all the way to the, to the very top. On the transform recognizer, I think we can just use the default. And if you look at the defaults here, this is basically gonna have all the different thresholds that are needed to detect whether we have a raise up, whether it's down, whether the palm is down and up. So I think this works for what we need. We don't need to create one from scratch. If you want to create one from scratch, you can go back here into Oculus, Interaction, SDK, Post, and then you can create your own transform thresholds. I think what we need for what we need today, this is, this is perfect. So once you have that, this is also going to tell us the, the uh, vector type. I'm gonna use world, I don't wanna use my head. So I think that it's how the demos were set up. And this is gonna tell us, okay, what kind of transform feature configs do we have? So in this case, if we're gonna be using the, the Shaka sign, I think I ended up doing palm. I want the palm to be basically facing my face. So I'm just gonna do that one. It needs to be set to true. And then the other one that I did as well is that the fingers are, are basically on the, the direction is gonna be upward. So basically what's gonna happen if you do this, this is basically gonna be true because the palm is facing my face and my fingers are basically going upwards. And then you also need to tell it, okay, which, which hand this is basically going to, going to be on. And I think I can just drag and drop this component because this has a hand reference already. This is not this hand, this is the hand reference. So just make sure that you know that difference. And then the shape recognizer here, we're also going to be doing, let's go ahead and associate the hand as well. On the shapes, I'm going to be using the shape, the, the Shaka sign that I explained to you how to set up. So, so always, this is gonna work, this is gonna detect, okay, what the shape of the fingers is. Do I have this shape? And then this is gonna say, okay, are we pointing up? Is the palm facing me? So this is gonna also allow us to do a logical operation. So if you look at the active state group, it basically says, okay, this is true and this is true. I wanna make sure that the active state gets basically uh, set to true, right? So that we can then pass that information to the active state selector and then the active state selector can be uh, associated with the selector unit event wrapper. At the end, you're gonna have a call that gets basically invoked and when selected, it's gonna get invoked and you can just you know, execute any type of method in, in one of your mono behaviors. Okay, so now that you have that, what I'm gonna do here on the, on the actual state, you're gonna have to tell it, okay, what are the states? I'm gonna have two different ones. One of them is gonna be the state that I get from the shape recognizer. And the other one is gonna be from the transform, right? So you wanna make sure that you do those two. You also can do an or if you wanted to have one or the other one. You can also do a sor if you wanted to just have one be valid. And you know, if, that, if that's the case, then, then that, uh, that's going to be set as selected. And then the next thing that I need to do is associate the active state group, drag and drop it in there. And now we should be good to associate it with the selector unity event. So after doing all that, we have, you know, we have the two states that we need to detect a new pose. We have the active state selector and then the selector unity event wrapper is basically going to get invoked when that, when that pose gets detected. Okay, now that we have that, let's go ahead and try this out. I'm just gonna go ahead and draw and hit plus plus to add two new Unity events. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and do what I did at the beginning of the video, just drag and drop this component and then go into my logger. And then in this case, I'm going to say, I just copy this and then say this is selected. And then we can do the same thing on this one, except it's going to be on selected. So I'll just go ahead and change that method, that name to be unselected so that we know that it's getting unselected. And then I think that's everything that we need to do there. And then obviously if you wanna just create a, a prefab out of that so that we can keep all your poses in there, you can just drag and drop it in there. And then now, you know, you have a pose that, you can, be, that can be recognized within Unity. So what I'm gonna do is, I think we can just add another box in here and I'm gonna make this one about 0 0.1, 0 0.1 and then let's do 0.1 as well. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add all the debug visuals to be able to detect that. So, so what we would do is we can add one for the transform recognizer. So on this one, we can just say that this is gonna be for our Shaka sign. And remember the Shaka sign is on the right hand. So make sure that you associate it with the right hand. So this is gonna tell me, 
okay, whether I'm doing whether I'm doing this, right? It's not any of the shapes that I designated on the fingers, at least not yet. And then once you do that, the other thing that I also wanted to do is this is currently just looking at thumbs up pose. I'm just gonna go ahead and associate it with my, you know, with my actual new check assign. So I'll just do that. And then I'll just do this as well. All right, guys, so it looks like everything is running. Let's go ahead and check it out and see. So you're gonna see if I go and point these up, you can see the fingers are currently in the upward direction. And the other box is gonna be if the face, if the palm is facing me, and you can see that's turning gray. And as soon as I go and angle the fingers, that's going to be false. So now everything is green. So what if I wanted to do maybe a, a shaka sign? So I have one of the fingers that it's currently, there we go, let me try that. So I need to make sure that I curl everything, right? And this finger, for some reason, I can never open it all the way up. <laughs> but you can kind of see that. Uh, let me see if I can do that again. So I think what I ended up doing is I went to a pinky and the curl. Actually, I went to a pinky and flexion. Maybe let's set this to neutral, because I can't get this finger to open all the way up. For some reason, my hands are a, a, little, bu a little bit buggy. <laughs> but now let's try this, right? So everything here should be working. I can do that. How about this? So now I can, now I can do it. So I select it and I do that. So I think doing neutral in my case because I can't get the pinky to open all the way, I think works. So, so that's everything that I wanted to show you. If you guys have any more questions about these, let me know in the comments. I'm gonna be making more videos about the Interaction SDK pretty soon here. So thank you very much, guys.